Hello, this is John Canalopoulos, an arterial segment surgeon, showing you the management of uh, early post LASIK ectasia with a novel technique. We will lift the patient's flap, as you will see here, utilizing a Sinsky hook, perform a partial topography guided PRK to treat the uh, newly developed irregular astigmatism in this patient, and then instill. 0.1% riboflavin within the flap after the flap is repositioned. Exposure to UV light of 7 milliwatts per square centimeter for uh, 10 minutes will accomplish cross-linking of this uh, cornea that has gone into ectasia. You can see here the edge of the original LASIK flap is being uh, prepared. It will be uh, reopened uh, with the use of uh, the Sinsky hook. This is a superiorly hinged flap. This procedure is performed three years after the initial LASIK procedure and uh, about a year and a half after ectasia was first established. You can see relifting the flap is quite uh, easy. We will dry the stromal bed and uh, we will show you the uh, proprietary wavelight topography guided software we're measuring pachymetry here, establishing that the cornea flap was actually about 180 microns. And uh, following that, the topography guided treatment will be performed on the stromal bed. Special care, of course, you can see here the topography guided treatment. It's a partial myopic PRK and a partial hyperopic PRK, aiming to treat the maximum amount of irregular astigmatism and removing the minimal amount of tissue possible. The treatment is placed uh, on the underlying stroma. I was mentioning before that special care is taken not to thin the stroma bed too much. And we see here several drops of 0.1% riboflavin solution of uh, 340 milliosmols osmolarity. This is proprietary mixture by Priavision of Mellon Park, California. A drop of a floxacin. Uh, to uh, sterilize the environment and again more drops soaking both the underside of the flap and the exposed uh, stroma of the patient. The flap will be repositioned. We'll wait a few minutes for riboflavin to readily diffuse within the overlying and underlying cornea. This is done quite readily as riboflavin will be introduced easily in the cornea stroma. More difficult if it has to go through epithelium or Bowman's membrane. You can already see that the cornea flap is colored yellow as long as the underlying cornea, this is clearly visualized in this picture, establishing the uh, diffusion of riboflavin within the flap. We will irrigate here as we would do normally in a LASIK retreatment. Reposition the flap. Uh, you can see that the yellow coloring of both the flap and the underlying stroma has not changed. A drop of Pret Forte to uh, delineate the gutter a Johnston applinator to get perfect the reapposition of the flap onto the underlying stroma. And following this, uh, without further wait, uh, we will treat this cornea for 10 minutes with uh, an enhanced fluence dose of 7 milliwatts per square centimeter. Uh, this uh, will go through the epithelium and uh, as you can see here and reach the level over and under the interface that riboflavin has soaked this cornea, thus selectively cross-linking the cornea right over and right under the interface of the LASIK flap and the flap to the underlying stroma. You can see here the pre-op topography and the post-op topography about a year later, a marked improvement in regularity. Cornea OCT here establishing the hyper-reflectivity consistent with cross-linking in the stroma. And I thank you very much for observing this novel technique with me. Again, John Kenalopoulos from Athens, Greece. Thank you.